Hey, and welcome to our conversation today with a member of the 2000 National League pennant winning Mets, one of the most clutch hitters in Mets history, and a member of the Mets Hall of Fame. I'm your host, Mike Janella, but joining me now is Edgardo Alfonso. Fonzie, how you doing? What's up, Mike? How you doing? It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Oh, it's a pleasure for me, and I can't <laughs> believe it's been... 20 years since that pending. Oh my God! That? It's crazy. You're, tell, you're telling me, man. I mean, I've been uh, I've been watching videos from that years, and uh, you know, a lot of posts uh, being in the Instagrams and uh, and uh, it, you know, and Twitter, and I say, wow, it's been 20 years already. So it seems like uh, like a couple of weeks ago, man. <laughs> yeah, it's it's insane, and that was for me because I was at that age, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this remember it like it was yesterday. Like, you guys are my team. I'm so excited to talk to you because look at this. I've had this for years in my apartment. I have little Edgardo, my little bobblehead here. <laughs> so now that I'll be talking to you and talking about uh, uh -huh. those teams, it, it's a pleasure. Uh -huh. So when you think about that year, that season, Fonz, and you're watching these videos and you're reminiscing, what are some of the first things that come to your head? What do you remember the most about some of those awesome Mets seasons? Um, talking about 2000, 2000, um, yeah. I think I would have brings to my mind or rings to my mind all the time is the trip to, to uh, Japan. You know, we, we make the trip to Japan from Florida and we opened the season in Japan. And then, uh, you know, that, that was a great experience uh, as a player, you know, visiting another country, uh, seeing different culture. And, um, and uh, I really enjoy there. And, uh, you know, it's like everything starts in Japan. You know, Mets and, and Cubs and Mets and uh, the two teams from Japan. And then come all the way to, um, to, uh, to uh, USA again and, and start, uh, you know, start playing here. I mean, I think, but uh, what is bringing more to my mind is uh, that trip to, uh, to Japan because um, the team, the whole team was all together there. Which ended greatly with Benny hitting that, that big hole. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's a much better plane ride back <laughs> to America. And, and also, and also, in that trip is when uh, Ray Ordonez got uh, 100 whatever uh, arrows uh, uh, and shortstop, and he made one in the after turf field. And say, oh my God, you know that was <laughs> that was bad for him. Yeah, but you know he had the streak still, so he'll live with yeah. that. I'm sure. Yeah. What was because you guys split that series against Chicago? I remember waking up at seven in the morning to watch those games here. Mets fans were with coffee and whatever they needed to watch those games live. Any fun stories from that trip? Uh, what did you guys do for fun? What was it like? Was it your first time there in yeah. Japan? What was it like exploring Tokyo? It was it was my for, my first time there, and I really enjoyed it because um, you know that culture is really interesting. You know, so we um, I remember when uh, when we play in, uh, in in Chiba Lotus, Mary, uh, no, um, yeah, Chiba Lotus, I think Chiba Lotus, yeah. That was the, like uh, you know you can take a train and go over there. I remember me and Piazza and I don't know it was Franco or Donias and all the guys we took the subway to get to uh, to the ballpark. No, the Sab Sabu Lions, the Sabu Lions was the team, and then we took we took the the, the subway to get to um, to Sabu Lions Stadium, and and you know just like that from middle of nowhere and the and the subway it was a bunch of uh, fans take a picture you know signing with the tie and and that was like wow this is amazing I mean we thought we thought nobody was gonna recognize us as a player but you know Mike was huge there and uh, you know many many things uh, eating eating wise um, uh, you know um, try to communicate with people try to get a massage from the from the Japanese uh, you know uh, 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 massage therapies and stuff like that it was fun. I mean, I really, I really enjoy it. But uh, you know, stuff like uh, you know, going to so weights and and people recognize, and from the first page to the last page, that was like uh, you know, people start yelling, you know, playing music, stuff like that. It was fun. It was a great way to start the season, as we mentioned. You split the series, but you got that second win coming back to the U.S. Now, the year before, '99 ended obviously in some heartbreak, even though you guys had a couple of amazing moments in a great playoff run, but. What was the mindset for the team coming out of 99 and starting in 2000, starting in Japan, starting that March? What was, what was your guys' mission? What, were your, what was your thoughts like when you started opening day that year? I think in, uh, step by step, I mean, 90, 98, 99, um, I, I would say 99, the team was uh, completed. I mean, we have a great, great team in 99. It's too bad we don't win all the way. 
Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think the front office uh, try, to, try to go out and try to get uh, what we need for that time in 2000. Um, when we see, uh, you know, stuff in 2000 and compared to 99, I say with 99, we have more better, better than guys and, and, you know, guys with more experience than, than 2000. But even like that, in 2000, I think we, uh, uh, we play great baseball. I mean, we play great baseball. We all, we, we all enjoy together and, 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 you know, do the little things to win. Uh, even though we have, uh, and the outfield is worth a bunch of, uh, uh, young guys. I mean, Peyton, Avayani. Um, I think Derek Hamilton was there. They were the only, uh, and, and D. Bell, I think, D. Bell, no, D. Bell was 99, I believe. Um, Ricky Henderson was there, and Melvin Mora, you know, all, all those guys, man. Uh, I mean, 2000 was, it was completely a different team, and uh, we already tasted the playoff in and, and 99, so we have an idea what, uh, what it takes like it. And, uh, you know, they went out to get uh, what we need for, the, for that run. And, and, and you see, where, how, you know, how far we went to uh, 2000 with the team. Now, that year, even with um, the highlight with Benny in Japan, it didn't start off great. You guys started three and six. You were under 500 for that first week and a half of the season. Then you go 11 and one and you guys start clicking and you're feeling it. At what point that year did you know, hey, this is the kind of team that has what it takes to get to the World Series? I think, I think you don't, you don't, I mean, you're thinking about when you come out of spin trainer and say, well, this team is, it looks pretty good. Uh, but I like, I get back again. Uh, 1999 was better team than, than the 2000. But, you know, when we started playing together, I mean, uh, like you say, you mentioned we're coming back and we was like, uh, you know, uh, uh, three and oh, somehow three and six or whatever. Um, and then, and then we went 11 and one. And then, you know, people started, wow, you know, this team is, is going to do something special. Um, you know, like uh, after, after two months, uh, seeing everybody playing uh, and, and, you know, being together and, and get to know each other out much better because spring trainer, you don't get to play uh, every day with the same guys. You play only five innings, uh, six innings, whatever. In the end of the spring trainer, you, get, you try to get everybody together. That way they, you know, you can get to know each other up. Uh, but um, I think, uh, you know, after two months, we say, you know, this team is, is kind of special because we play uh, small, small baseball, uh, do the little things to win, and uh, everybody is passionate, you know, to, uh, to play. And you individually were a huge part of that, and you were having some of the best years of your career at that time. Now, Piazza, he had the sexy numbers, the home runs and the RBI, right? But in 2000, you actually led the team in a war and wins above replacement. You made your first all-star team. That yeah. year, what was? I mean, '99. You had a great year too. I thought I gonna make my. I thought I gonna make my All Star game in '99. In '99, yeah. Were yeah. you? Bu- how how upset were you when you didn't make it in '99? Um, I think I start. I start uh, my first couple months. I start slow, and then I start. Uh, I started pushing. You know, after. But you know, when you go into the world, to uh, to the All Star game, is with your first couple months, it's gonna be good. So. You know, but, right. Yeah. The all-star game, it's, it's more of a halfway all-star halfway, than the yeah. full season all-star, yeah. right? So which, which season do you think you were better, 99 or 2000? I think 99. I think 99 yeah. to me as a player. Uh, 99, I, I just got uh, my 27 home runs uh, and the 108 RBI. And, uh, you know, um, I get that my Silver Sluggers, uh, uh, you know, Louisville Silver Sluggers is the best second base. And I think in uh, 99 was my best year. Either way, I, mean, I can't imagine what your life was like at that point, right? You're in your mid-20s. You're having these two amazing seasons. Um, you're married. You've got two young kids at this yeah. point, right? Yeah. I mean, you're playing in New York City. You're on a team that's winning. What, was it overwhelming? Was it exciting? Like, what was your life like? How did you was, handle all of this? Going on? It, was, it was everything for me. I mean, I think, uh, like I always say, uh, I really enjoy my time here because New York is different than anybody else, anywhere, anywhere else. Um, uh, when you do it in New York, you can do it anywhere. So it, it's fun because you're going out. I mean, I, I don't used to go out much here, but sometimes you're going out to eat. And then when you walk to the restaurant, people say, wow, man, you guys playing good. You know, it, it's good when you hear that from fans here, especially in New York. Uh, we're going to do all the way, you know, it's, it's something that, that really, uh, really push you as a player to try, you know, do more and more every day. So, um, you know, especially in New York, New York is a big market. So uh, if you're doing here in New York, you can do it anywhere else. So 
that's my, my, my our mindset. Um, you know, even I talk to my wife and say, wow, you guys are doing great. Uh, we're so happy as a fan. And then, you know, and then uh, it, it, it was fun everywhere else. I mean, every, everywhere you're going, you, just, you have people who really uh, recognize the work that, that we was putting together that year. And you put in a lot of the work. One of the things that I think so many Mets fans love about you is how you always seem to come up clutch in the big situations, right? The home run in Cincinnati in 99, mm -hmm. taking Randy Johnson deep and, and all the RBI you had against the Diamondbacks. Then even the next year, that big home run against the Giants, and you killed it in the series against the Cardinals. I think you had eight hits in five games. So many guys, baseball's a hard sport. And then when you get on the big stage, it's even more difficult. What, what was it about you? How did you succeed in those situations where so many other guys struggle? I think, I think uh, uh, the level of concentration, I will say that. I don't, I don't know. I mean, people ask me the same question. I think, uh, um, you know, I, I like to be in a uh, stuff spot, a spot, you know. Um, uh, you know, especially with men in scoring position. I, I don't know if it was me, but I concentrate a little more. Uh, try to go the other way. That was my, my uh, mindset, you know, that way I don't open too quick. And, and you know, do, do little things like that. Um, <clears throat> try to, um, uh, you know, do my part. Because, um, I, like, I always talk to, uh, every time I talk to Mike uh, Piazza, <clears throat> and I, I always tell him, Mike, you know, when you're coming, when you're coming to, uh, to New York, you make my job so easy. Because <laughs> everybody was really focused on you. And and I was I was like uh, under the table doing my my things, you know, but um, that's that's what I do. I mean, I, I just I uh, I think I concentrate a little more and try to visualize where 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 my spot's gonna hit, where where I gonna hit the ball, and where to I gonna try to hit the ball. And uh, you know that worked for me. I was more patient in the home place, to let go pitch, and uh, you know try to try to make something happen. And which one I did, so it was good. I'm looking at my notes here. Do you know how many Mets postseason records you still own for no, hitting? I don't. Bring it up. Okay, you have, yeah, here we go. You've got the Mets. You're the Mets career leader in playoff games, hits, RBI, runs, doubles, and you're tied for the lead with one triple. Do you remember the one triple that you hit or no? Wow. I've in got playoff? the answer here. I want to see if you remember it. In playoff? In the playoffs, yeah. That was against Card uh, the Cardinals? Yeah, yeah. And, and St. Game Louis. Two against St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis. Brit, Brit Reams, you hit it off of. Yeah, and yeah. I, that's amazing. So. I think that was that was to a right field, and and that was that that was a ball that I hit to a right field, and I think the guy tried a dove for the ball, something like that, and I you know I just went all the way. Hey, you end up at third base. No matter how it happens, it <laughs> happened. Like you got it. That was my first triple. Yeah, yeah. And and you're it's only Mets have only hit there's only been one is the triple the career lead from the playoffs. So you're still there, tied for first. Wow, so, I don't even know I don't even know that. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um obviously you individually were great, but you were part of especially in ninety nine. I mean, we all know remember the Sports Illustrated cover, best infield ever. It's been twenty years. Have you seen any other infields that are as good to you as what you and Oli and Ray and Robin? Wow, I, I don't know, man. But I, I was so happy to be part of that of that of that infield. I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen any infield like that. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you haven't seen it or I haven't. I don't have time to see it. But um, I don't hear nothing about infields like that. But uh, you know, when you when the people talking about that infield, uh, it makes you so happy to be part of it because. We worked so hard that year to be one of the best in, in, in the big leagues. And uh, it was fun when people come into town. I mean, we play against any, any other team. And this, the first thing they say, wow, we had to hit a fly ball because nothing going through, through the infield right now. So when people talking like that, you say, wow, that's, that's something special, you know. But um, I, I'm so happy to be part of it. I mean, I think we all know together. We worked so, so hard together. Um, one of the things that we always di did back in those days, it was like, uh, and, and during the batting practice, uh, we play game. We, you know, the old infield, the old infield, we play games in like game situation. And, and I think that was a huge, 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 uh, uh, huge help for us because we know how to throw the ball, where I like it, or, or how, how Robin sometimes, you know, the ball sinks a little bit. Uh, when you throw the first bay, how, you know, we work all those little details and, and I think it pay off pretty good. 
how do you think you guys would have done today in today's game with all the shifting and all the guys that <laughs> hit home runs? What do you think? Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. You know, we used to do we used to do the chips thing without papers, you know, because this is the common sense of the game. And and uh, I think what they did, they just bring all the all the you know the the ships, uh, bring it on the paper because when you play against like uh, you know like um, um, great Biggio, great Biggio is the guy who used the whole field, and especially with two strikes, you're not gonna play same with no strikes, you know. So so things like that and and, and common sense of the game, and, and that's why how do we do it? But I think it's, uh, I don't know, with all these uh, chips right now, then they give you the, the right side really open, the left side sometimes open. I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I don't know, but uh, that's the way it is. So this uh, sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. But, uh, you know, that's... As a way. hitter, you probably would have loved it, right? Oh, all these I, open holes, I would right? say that. I would say that. I, you know how many broken bats I will have by then? Try to go the <laughs> other way. Oh, my God. You might have hit what 350 if you played. Well, I don't know, but I I get I will say if I get it like 190 90 hits, I would say like 250 something like Easy. that. Easy, easy. I love it. They give it to you, man. They give it to you. You got to your common sense of the game. You give it to you. Yeah. You got to take it. You know. It's right there. Do you talk to any of the guys from those teams? Who are you still? Clo who were you closest with when you played? And then who have you stayed in touch with the most these days? Um, you know, to say one guy, especially, um, it, it's kind of hard. The guy that I spent more time, it was Ordonia, of course, because it was my, my part in crime all the time, you know. Uh, but um, I keep up with, uh, with the guys and during the season with everyone, you know. We used to go out to eat uh, as a group. Uh, right now, you know, everybody, you know, going different uh, 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 cities and stuff like that. But uh, Johnny is still here in New York. Uh, we, you know, sometimes once in a while we talk. Um, we talked the other day with uh, Robin, Robin and, and Johnny. We did a Zoom. And that was great to see those guys together again. And uh, the most guy that I that I keep in touch is uh, Ray. Ray is is in Miami, and uh, you know. But um, I, I wish we can, you know, we can talk to still talking. Uh, Turt Wendell too. He's a uh, crazy Turk. Um, we, uh, <laughs> we talk once in a while. Top Pratt. Um, you know, it, it's good to see those guys and, and keep in touch with those guys. And well, it's happy to, happy, makes me happy to know that you guys still stay in touch because yeah. that team seemed like a big part of the success was the chemistry. You guys all got along. You all, you know, clicked. So it's good to know that that was authentic. And even now, 20 years later, you're all still sticking together. That's really, that makes, as a fan, that makes, uh, yeah, makes us feel really good. I think that was, that was the great part of uh, that team. We, we all, we, we would, like we said, we go on together. We are going out together. We come into the stadium together and we, we stay together pretty much. And the, how you, this is how you win games in the big leagues, you know, you started in the clubhouse. All right, Fonzie, we're going to let you go soon, but we're going to end with a bit of a rapid fire round. I'm going to ask you oh. six, six really quick questions in honor of the Mets record you also have. You share it six hits in one game, which is still the Mets all-time record. So are you ready for this? I'm going to be peppering these fastballs in. All right, let me see what I can do. <laughs> All right, first one. The nickname Fonzie, right? We've been calling you that pretty much since you got to New York. When people first started calling you that, did you know who the Fonz was, the character no. from TV? No. After after I find out, after I find out, but that was that was great. I mean, I, I don't I don't even know after I find out. I mean, it's a cool guy to get a nickname. It is, after. Just, yeah, cool yeah. Fonz. Yeah, cool Fonz, and, and everybody going like this. Uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, that's, that's great. All right, next question: If you and your prime stepped in the batter's box against Jacob Degrom today, how would that at bat go? Uh, try to swing anything close because uh, this guy is, is unbelievable. I mean, you close your eyes and try to swing it because uh, he got. Uh, I've been seeing him pitching, and and I've been talking to a guy. They say this is this is a tougher guy in the big leagues right now. I would agree, and I think most people yeah. watching this video. I, I would chuck, agree. I chuck up a little bit and try to make contact, but uh, that's it. I, Wait, look, I looked at. I, I looked it up too because Randy Johnson was you know one of the best strikeout pitchers ever, and you faced mm -hmm. him a lot. And my note there, you faced in the 32 at bats. You only struck out three times against uh, one of the best strikeout artists ever. So, yeah, choke it up and just try and put it in play, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. So, in your time in your career, you split time between second and third base. This is the next question. In the end, which one did you like playing better? Defense, second base. Second base or third? Second, second base, yeah. That was, my natural, a, that was my natural position. I only played third base because they don't have a, they don't have a third base by, uh, by the time. 
but uh, but uh, second base is what I enjoy more more. All right, next question then. Who was the funniest guy in the clubhouse when you were with the Mets? Well, we have to make we have we have uh, we have a. Uh, 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 Turk Wendell was one. Uh, um, uh, Derek Bell when he played. Uh, Johnny was the classy dude. Johnny Franco, and uh, uh, I think those those guys so far, yeah. That's a lot of guys to keep the yeah. ball loose. So you guys had you guys had a pretty good group. Uh, question number five: What's your favorite restaurant to eat in New York City? In New York City, Parkside. Parkside. I love. I love how you have your answers ready. There's no hesitation. Like, you know, you're a man who knows what he likes. Yeah. I love it. Um, and the last question for you. There's so much good young talent on the Mets uh, right now. Who's your favorite Met to watch play these days? Um, well, I, I like Jimenez. Jimenez, I think Jimenez is going to bring a, a lot of to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the team right now because he's, you know how to play the game. Um, I, I still have, I still have a, a phase on Rosario. Uh, Rosario is still uh, one of the best talent that we have, uh, but uh, he, you know, I think I think I I, I don't I don't want to give up on him because he's, he's he have a great talent, but I think Jimenez Jimenez uh, is gonna be the guy who uh, who gonna bring a lot to the table, and and uh, he know how to play the game. So um, talking about him in the future, I think he's gonna be a, a one of the best player. Spoken like a, a true all-time second baseman, always sticking with the guys in the middle of the field. That's who you like watching the most. I love it. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Fonzie, for all the memories, obviously, when you were on the diamond with the Mets, but also for taking the time today. We really appreciate it. Mike, it's a pleasure, man. I really enjoy it to time, and, uh, you know, it's time to eat. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Always time to eat. I like that. I'm about to go meet you for a reservation in uh, one of these days. Be all awesome. right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sounds good. Have thank you too, Edgardo Alfonso, and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.